Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. The IMAX showing came with a free poster that I haven't looked at yet. That looks pretty cool. There's so many Spider-Man. Look, that's like kind of the gist of this review, is there are so many Spider-Men in this movie. This is a sequel to what many people consider to be one of the best superhero films ever. One of the best animated films ever. This film had such a high bar to reach considering it was following the first one. And on an initial reaction... Yeah, it lived up to the Doing hype. a sequel is never easy to do, especially in this day and age, because we've seen every single trope already done. But this one does what the sequel needs to do. Makes it bigger and better in kind of every single area, but it does it in a way that's actually interesting and unique in ways we haven't necessarily seen in other sequels. The animation is gorgeous. And I think what makes it so good looking is it's such a unique style that we don't ever see in film. I don't know why animation companies aren't trying new things like this. It feels like a lot of them have just settled into their style and they don't actually take the time to explore different ways of doing so it. So forget Super Mario, forget whatever Disney and Pixar has for the rest of the this year. This better way in the Oscar for Best Animated Picture at the end of the year. The animation especially serves a story like this so well. Because it is based off of a comic book, we see a lot of those elements and even the transitions and editing styles. I've always loved Spider-Man as a character to watch on screen, mostly because of the hand-to-hand -hand combat and web swinging and all the choreography makes it very fun to watch. I was the perfect age when the Sam Raimi films came out, so those were always a joy to see him just swinging through the streets of New York. And even though I don't love the newer versions as much as the original trilogy, they always offer something unique, especially with like I said, the hand-to-hand -hand combat, the web swing. And so when you're able to animate it in such a unique way, I think the camera moves in ways that you can't do live action. And so I think this film is especially special because it could only be done with this style of animation. Another thing that this film does, especially with the sequel element, is use this meta commentary to try to have a take and deconstruct its plot and a lot of the tropes that it should fall into. It's a key central point to the plot of this movie, and it's clearly trying to say a bigger message on the movie industry as a whole. Nonsense I could take or leave that. I think mostly because it feels like we've been very oversaturated with this kind of message where movies are commenting on the movie industry. But if you're going to do that, especially within this film, at least do it right. And I do think this film did it right. But just right. like any other superhero film, there's a lot of Easter eggs and cameos from just anything Spider-Man related and even beyond Spider-Man material. It's definitely nothing you're going to miss out on if you don't catch it right away. But it might just give you a couple extra laughs or smiles and you just kind of have to expect that with comic book movies today. It's also just very fast paced. And that's not a complaint. I think that's just me kind of getting old where I'm trying to keep up with all the flashy visuals on screen. But this movie hardly slows down. I was actually paying attention to it towards the middle of it and there's only like one or two scenes at the end where I feel like the pacing really let it breathe and the emotional scenes kind of exist. But it's just go 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 the entire time. So this definitely won't be everyone's thing for that reason. But I think that's just the trend we've been seeing with animated movies where they really want to keep your attention span. So again if you're going to keep my attention span at least make it something I want to look at. And this movie is definitely something I want to look at. The story itself is so well done. We get a lot more backstory with Gwen Stacy specifically, and this movie really opens up with her and is honestly one of the most heartbreaking openings to any movie I've the seen. The plot focuses on the character of Spider-Man, but in a way that we haven't really seen before. And part of that is through the deconstruction, like I mentioned earlier. But through that and the commenting on his previous arcs, we get this new perspective where we've previously seen him have to make a choice. Is it going to be his loved ones or trying to save the city? And the question posed in this one is why does he have to make that choice? Is it possible that you can just make all the right choices and save everyone? And the thing is, I don't know if we fully know that answer because let us not forget this is a part one. And I'm a little embarrassed to admit that I forgot about that fact until the movie was about 15 minutes from wrapping and up. And if you keep up with my movie takes at all, you know that Fast X was also a cliffhanger part one and I did not like that at all. The difference is here it works because there is a full arc in this movie. The characters have a beginning and end. There's a full story that's told. And the movie's actually good unlike Fast X. So I think once the next part comes out, it'll really give a lot more context to this film and kind of solidify a lot of my feelings towards but it. But there's really not a lot of complaints. This movie is a blast. It really does meet all the expectations that you might have going in after watching the first one. It's gonna get a bunch of money, win a bunch of awards, and yeah, it's deserving of all of it. So that's Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Have you seen it? What do you think? Comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and I will see you next time.